Let's continue with solving the example that we were working on. So, so far we found this 6 by 6 global surface matrix that we want to fill in. We have found the local surface matrices for the two elements that we uh, used for this example, elements 1 and element, uh, and element 2. And we have also considered a constant E and constant I. We found the relationship between the local and global forces for the nodes as well as the local and global displacements for the nodes. Now it's time to find this 6 by 6 global surface matrix for this beam example. So let's first use the local surface matrix for element 1. Element 1 was only uh, or only consists of nodes 1 and nodes 2. So node 1 has d1y, phi1z, node 2 has d2y, d2z as I've shown in here. So what that means is that I only need to use the displacements corresponding to node 1 and node 2 to fill in the global surface matrix. And that portion of the global surface matrix is shown by this dashed rectangle. So I just plug in these numbers from the local surface matrix for element 1 to this portion of the global surface matrix. Basically, those numbers come in here. No change, no uh, difficult mathematics. And that's because I've shown these uh, corresponding displacements for each node here and there that shows that this portion of the global matrix is where only nodes 1 and 2 are considered. Moving on to element 2, I only have nodes 2 and 3 for displacements. And that portion of the big matrix is here, again shown by a dashed rectangle. So if I divide this into a four, uh, to four two by twos and show one, two, three, four, it would be equivalent to one, two, three, four. And it's easily, uh, it can be easily distinguished by looking at the displacements at each row and column. So if I take a look at that and if I correspond them to these nodes in, a, in, in the local stiffness matrix, I can find, figure out where which portion of the big global surface matrix these values go there. But the point one or the portion one of this matrix was already filled with elements from or, or components from element one. This 12 was from the previous one, this minus 6, this minus 6, and this 4L squared are from element 1. Let me change the color of the pen so I can easily uh, make my point across. Now this 12 from portion 1 of the local comes and adds to the previous 12. This 6L comes here, and then this 6L comes here and this 4L2 comes here. So these two will add up, minus 6L plus 6L will be 0. Again, minus 6L plus 6L becomes 0 and this will be 8L squared. The other components of this matrix were not or initially populated so they are populated exactly with the numbers that are in this matrix. Then I'll have K51, K52, K61, K62 and K15, K16, K25, K26. Because I don't have any more elements and there are no values associated with them, I can just write zeros here in place of these elements. So if I do that and if I do the summations in this portion of the matrix, I will end up with this 6 by 6 global surface matrix for the beam. So 12, 6L minus 12, 6L and um, if I take a look at this portion, is when the two elements or the two nodes uh, summed up to give me 12, 0, 0, 8L squared there. And the rest of the elements were just populated with one of the local coordinates, uh, local surface matrices uh, according to the nodes that are attached to them. So then I can relate the global nodal forces to local nodal forces using this big 6 by 6 
stiffest matrix. And again, because I had three nodes in my model and two degrees of freedom per node, I ended up with a six by six stiffness matrix. Now, if I take a look at my problem again, I have node one, node two, node three. Here I have D1Y is equal to zero and phi one is equal to zero, phi one Z. Here I know that M1 Z is or M2 Z is equal to zero, but F2 Y is equal to minus F and then here m3 z is equal to m but f2 y is equal to 0 and I can put those boundary conditions here I know these loads not a loads from the problem statement and I know these nodal displacements from the uh, problem statement the ones that I have written by red are the unknowns of my problem so I have six unknowns and six equations that if I solve I can find these six unknowns. So if I assume some numbers and let me change the color of the pen to not get confused with the blue line. If I assume these numbers for I, E, L, F and M I'll end up with this six by six surface matrix I just have to put the numbers there and this big matrix EI over L cubed times this six by six matrix and then I can solve that problem which I have done using a MATLAB code which I'll try to show in here if I can minimize this uh, And come here all right so I've shown I've written this um, code in MATLAB this is the Young's modulus for two elements then I have L three meters for two elements then I have I uh, four times to the minus four meters squared or meter to the four for two elements then I find EI over L cubed for all the elements from this line line five Then I find the stiffest matrices for each of the elements, which are the global or local stiffest matrices, using a function file that I've written for beam stiffest matrix, which is in here. Basically uses those uh, numbers that I've put in the equation there to give me the stiffest matrix for the beam. Then I might be in the wrong problem. Yes, here is where I am, or I should be, or the problem that I'm solving. Then I'm using the same function file to get the global stiffest matrix for the um, beam that I'm solving. And here I'm finding the displacements using the stiffest matrix that I found from the function file and the forces that I applied to it. So I have three nodes. Two of the nodes I know the forces. Minus 1000 force applied in the y direction and no moment and node 2. And in node 3 I have no force but 500 Newton meter moment and the force I mean the displacement and rotation at node 1 are 0 so if I just take out portion of my stiffest matrix that I found from line 12 and find its net inverse and multiply it by the known forces I can find the displacements and I can find the uh, forces global forces from here and the next thing is just uh, being creative and writing a code to do an animation for um, this beam as well as showing the displacement of the beam. So if I run this my code shows an animation of how the beam deforms and this is only three nodes so they're not exact. If I close them 
these are going to be the total surface matrix or also global surface matrix here for a beam problem and nodal forces and the nodal displacements which I've shown in the slide here. So according to the MATLAB code I get these forces let me go back to pen a thousand reaction force at node 1 which is equal to the opposite of the local or external force applied to node 2 and then I have 2.5 kilonewton meter uh, moment applied to node 1 which is uh, equal to that 500 times the total length and then also the effect of this force uh, at its length uh, 3 meter from the base and these are the local nodal or not, lo not local global nodal displacements node 1 is 0 and d1y and phi1z and the other nodes have their own values so we use these surface matrix that we found earlier to solve a typical beam problem